Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics today, color, specifically white balance. Okay, let's get started by looking at a question that Ishika sent in. Sometimes when I take pictures, they look very orange. It mostly seems to happen when I shoot indoors. How can I fix this? Well, Yashika, you're not alone. A lot of photographers have issues with color. The problem you're describing can be solved by adjusting your white balance. And we can begin to understand white balance by looking at an ordinary page of white paper. When we look at a piece of white paper with our eyes, it looks white whether it's lit by a candle, a fluorescent light, or the sun. It doesn't matter to us, it always looks white. But our cameras get confused by different sources of light. It may think white is actually orange when lit by a candle, and fluorescent lights can turn things green, and big skies can turn things really blue. The way to solve this is by setting your white balance properly. When we talk about white balance, we're really talking about color. And unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go into a lot of color theory today, so I'm going to stick to the basics and keep things very simple. Now let's start by looking at color temperature. Different types of light sources, things like a candle or a lamp or the sun or even the sun behind the clouds, well, they all have different color temperatures. Some things, like the sun, are warmer than other sources of light, like a table lamp. Now color temperature is measured using the Kelvin scale. It's similar to the Fahrenheit or Celsius scale, but it's specific to sources of light. Let's take a look. A candle burns at about 1900 degrees Kelvin. The K stands for degrees Kelvin, not thousand. A tungsten lamp is about 3200 degrees Kelvin. Midday sun is about 5500 degrees Kelvin. And a partly cloudy sky during the day is about 8000 degrees Kelvin. As light sources become warmer, they have more and more blue. And as sources become cooler, they have more and more amber. Okay, let's get back to our white balance discussion. White balance is how your camera balances these colors so that they are mixed properly. So white looks white. When the white balance is off, your photos will have a red color cast and they'll look orange. Or they'll have a blue color cast and look blue. Let's take a look at our diagram again. When you're shooting indoors with normal light bulbs, also known as tungsten lights, the color temperature is about 3200 degrees Kelvin. To keep things balanced, our camera needs to add some blue so that there is an equal mix or balance of blue and amber. When we're shooting outside on a cloudy day, the color temperature is about 8000 degrees Kelvin and our camera needs to add some amber to keep things balanced. Okay, well now that we know all about the basics of color temperature, let's get our white balance in order. Most point and shoot cameras and all modern DSLR cameras allow you to adjust the white balance. Unfortunately, the steps aren't the same for all cameras. So we're gonna focus on two of the most popular brands, Nikon and Canon. Now if you own a different brand of camera, the steps for adjusting your white balance are gonna be very, very similar. So check your camera's user manual for specific instructions. Now on most DSLRs, you can get to the white balance adjustment in one of two ways. You can use a white balance button, or you can go into the menus to adjust your white balance. And many cameras like this D90 have both a button and a menu setting. So in that case, just use what works best for you. Once you press the white balance button, or if you choose to adjust your white balance in the menu, you'll have a few options. I've hooked my D90 to the big screen to demonstrate. Your camera has a few standard presets, and these work great in many situations. So let me show you those. So if I go in here to my menu, you'll see that I have an auto setting, and that's when the camera tries to decide exactly what the best settings are. Then you have uh, incandescent, fluorescent, direct sunlight, and these actually just get warmer and warmer as we go down the list. Um, so these should be pretty obvious. Incandescence for when you're shooting with light bulbs inside. If you're out in a nice Phoenix afternoon, direct sunlight, or a cloudy day, uh, you would choose the one that is the most appropriate to your proper situation. There's also one here that's K. This is where you can choose a very specific color temperature, and that's something we uh, usually use in the studio where we know exactly what our lights are calibrated to. And then there's this other one here, and that is pre for preset. And that's a custom white balance. Now, the presets are really good, but for the best results, we want to use a custom white balance. 
So let's take a look at how that works. Well, setting your custom white balance is pretty simple. And to demonstrate this in our studio here today, I've constructed what you might find in a normal house. It's very low light with a couple of tungsten lamps. And to help us out, we have Nisha here modeling for us. OK, now the steps are as follows. You'll need a standard gray card. Now, you can get these gray cards at Adorama.com. You can get a pack of two for about 12 bucks. They're very inexpensive. But this is going to be the reference that your camera uses to set the white balance. So once you have this, you're going to put it where your subject is, take a photo, and then tell your camera this is what their white balance should be set to, and all your colors will come out looking splendid. So let me demonstrate this for you on a Nikon and a Canon. OK, first we're going to do this with a Nikon. So I'm going to give Nisha the gray card. So Nisha, hold that to your face. And I'm going to push my white balance button and select Pre. Once I've done that, I'm going to let go of my white balance button, push it again, and hold it. The pre will start to flash, and then I'll take a picture of this gray card. Then it's going to say good. If it says good, now you can take that down. I'm set to take my shot. So look right at me. Perfect. Now with the Canon, it's a little bit different. First, I'll go ahead and hit my white balance button, select my custom white balance icon. Once I have that, I'll go ahead and take a shot of the gray card again. I've got that. Then I'll go into the menu, select custom white balance, and then it's going to ask me to choose a photo. And I'll choose the photo of the picture of the gray card that we just took. I'll select that. It says use this white tone. I say OK. Now my custom white balance is set, and I can start to shoot. Now doing this is going to eliminate all that orange in your shots, and things are going to look terrific. Well, that was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time. But before we go, I'd like to suggest a few more things. For the most accurate color, always shoot in raw mode. When you shoot in raw, you can always set your white balance in post-production using an application like Lightroom, Photoshop, or Aperture. And I also suggest you use more advanced method of white balancing by using a better tool than your standard gray card. Now, I use the X-Rite Color Checker Passport, and I really love this thing. Also check out the Data Color Spider Cube, and the Expo Disc. These tools will give you the most accurate color. Well, that's all we have time for today. Remember, if you have any photography-related questions, just send them to askmark at adorama.com, and we might use them in an upcoming episode. I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.